Time to open another advent calendar surprise. I'm so excited for this one. Let's take a look. It's my $8 a month Patreon fee. And look. Today I didn't get just one. Oh no. I got 337. I love opening surprises like this because it's basically free money. $2,696 and all I had to do was promise a video to my fans. The best part? I can just make the video whenever I feel like it. Those suckers will eat it up no matter how long I make them wait. Now that I have my money, I'm off to Disney. See ya. Hey guys. That intro was made by Kiwi Opinions on Twitter. She posts her own Acacia Advent Calendar videos there and they are hilarious. So please go check those out and give her a follow. She is so creative and hilarious. And I just wanna give a huge thank you to her for that intro. So in this video, I wanna talk about Acacia's recent posts on Patreon. If you don't know, Acacia quote left unquote Instagram due to her receiving backlash for stealing $15,000 in revenue from a smaller creator. She made a few posts on Instagram regarding it, but never apologized to Ash, never apologized to her followers, took accountability or refunded anyone once she was exposed. That situation and the events following it have too many details for me to include in this video, but the end result of all of this is that she is now posting the same or even lazier content than she did on Instagram behind a paywall. There are two accounts on Twitter that upload her Patreon content, so huge thanks to Kaka's Patreon and Acacia's content for the screenshots. You guys are doing the Lord's work. One thing I want to talk about before we get into the Patreon slash TikTok video is Acacia's manipulation tactics. Everything I'm going to talk about in this video are things that I learned in a university class called Media and Politics, which explains why news, content, and publications on the internet and by the media are the way they are and what their purpose is. Although Acacia is not a political figure, thank God, she does employ a lot of the same techniques. Here's an example. This photo was posted after some concerning Instagram stories and a brief hiatus by Acacia. This photo utilizes something called the softball technique. This technique is widely used in politics to convey a certain image of a person, whether it be positive or negative. Let's use this photo of AOC. An opponent of AOC would use this goofy photo of her to convey a negative opinion, make her look foolish, or imply she is not intelligent. However, this photo conveys AOC as powerful. The camera is looking up at her, she's in a power stance, she has a resolved expression, and the capital is in the background. There are many other ways to use the softball technique, but the composition, expressions, palette, and content of the photo are used heuristically. Heuristics are shortcut pathways in the brain that help us create opinions and judgments very quickly and are extremely vital to any type of media. Okay, still with me? Keisha specifically uses the online processing model in order to invoke an emotional response. This means it doesn't matter what the facts are, she is using heuristics in order to make an impact based on an impression of the facts and not the facts themselves. This is done specifically in the photo by her being naked, conveying that she is bearing all and telling the truth, or that she has been stripped down to her most basic form of self, giving the impression of honesty and vulnerability. She is also surrounded by the color white, which conveys the impression of innocence, purity, and humility. The last important part of her softball technique is that she's facing away from the viewer and looking up and out the window wistfully. This particular pose is used frequently in politics to give the impression of moving forward and making progress. Now, of course, if you know Acacia, you know none of that is true. She scammed, lied, deflected, and used her power as a larger influencer to try to get ahead without being creative or putting in any actual work. Okay, now that everyone has their degree in political science, let's talk about the ridiculousness of her recent Patreon posts. On November 30th, she announced that she would be posting a video on December 1st and also urges her patrons to manually resubscribe as the billing period is restarting. Oops, wrong screenshot. Here's the real one. Now, given that the video is her putting together an advent calendar, I can't think of any good reason why she could not have the video prepared and uploaded on the 1st. Many of us on Opinion Twitter speculated her excuses as to why she promised the video on the 1st but did not post it or give any updates until the 4th of December, late in the evening. Now she claims that the Patreon video uploader is crummy. From my research, a video of 200 megabytes should be no problem, so I have no idea where she got this from. Thousands and thousands of creators upload videos on Patreon every single day, but it delays Acacia's video by three days? Not likely. She also mentions trying to find a way to keep the video private because she knows the second she uploads it, one of the two accounts I previously mentioned will scalp it and upload it for us. 
So her problem solving ends in her deciding to direct her paying fans to switch platforms completely and be vetted for her private TikTok. Of course, Kaka's content and Acacia's content are braver than the Marines and were able to get in anyways, so this was wholly unnecessary and ineffective. Also, not everyone can download or chooses to use TikTok. That's why they're on Patreon. At the time of this video, only about 30 people have been accepted by the private TikTok, and two of those are our moles. That's approximately 10% of her patrons. Let's take a look at her new TikTok page. She is now rebranded to at Becoming Comfort and is using the name Casey? Kachi? Kakia? Who knows? It's a blatantly lazy rebrand and is weird given that the followers from this account will be coming directly from her Patreon account, which uses her real name. Becoming Comfort is also a boring fluff name that means nothing. If she's trying to distance herself from her own tainted name and brand, she's doing a poor job of it. Acacia, I would love to be your PR manager. Um, I just need $15,000. Thank you. The video itself is formatted super weird, and so are the captions. She either couldn't be bothered to space things out correctly or wanted to stuff the caption full of words to make it look like she put effort into it. Maybe both. Probably both. Since the formatting is weird, it's hard to tell if she firmed this in vertical, meaning she may have filmed it exclusively for TikTok and didn't even try to upload it to Patreon. Since the video is kind of zoomed in and some things are cut off and out of frame, it seems like she didn't really put any effort into filming, regardless if it was originally supposed to be on Patreon or not. She also didn't even bother to put music over the time lapse or show what was going into the calendar for each day. A lot of people online are flaming the actual gifts themselves, like the Jojo Siwa band-aids and the Christmas activities slash tasks, but my big issue is that she has three children of varying ages and abilities, and these all appear to be for her oldest child, adding yet another instance of favoritism to her history. This is two minutes of lazy, artless, boring content. She time lapses most of the video so the viewer can't see what she's giving for the gifts or get inspiration for their own calendar. She had three extra days to make this video decent, but decided to put out half-assed content yet again, not to mention she couldn't even stick to her own schedule or even give an update in the three days for her paying customers who were left in the dark. Anyways, that's about it. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching. Huge shout out and thank you to all of these accounts who provided me with screenshots and photos. Happy holidays. If you're watching this, baby, I know you are. I love you and I appreciate you and um, rock on.